Hello everybody, this is Chris with Overclockers Club. I'm back again. I've got a cool switch here from Netgear. This is a GS908. So let's get out of the box and see what it looks like. Now the GS908 has actually been out for about a year and a half. Uh, not quite two years. It came out toward the end of 2017. But it's still worth taking a look at. Uh, before I open that up, this is one that I had been using. It actually went through a uh, thunderstorm and we lost a port, but the others seem to work just fine. This is the GS105, and uh, you can still get these. They're around $50. But it started acting funny the other day, and uh, it got really, really hot. Not just warm, it was hot. So I figured, you know, might be time for a new switch. Now there are a couple different kinds of switches. There are managed and unmanaged. This one is unmanaged. It says it right there. There is actually a GS908E version which comes with two USB charging ports and it is a managed type of switch so it's more expensive. Now this one here I paid less than $20 for and that seems to be a good going rate on uh, Amazon. I'm sure Newegg and other retailers uh, have them for similar prices. But an unmanaged switch will be plenty for the vast majority of people out there for home networks, even small office networks. A managed switch allows you to access the switch, get in there and change some settings, control the network traffic, monitor the network traffic. Whereas an unmanaged switch uh, it doesn't do any of that. You basically plug it in and plug in all your devices and you are usually ready to go. So inside the box got some installation information here which is pretty basic. In this case uh, really most of its specifications So really there's some mounting screws if you want to mount it to the wall or secure it. Looks like some sort of uh, wire management, cable management, and then a small adapter which is rated at 12 volts, one half of an amp. And then the unit itself is plastic, it's pretty lightweight. And there you go, it has protector plastic on the top. It's actually a more attractive switch than this is more of a utilitarian or kind of a sterile looking device, more industrial. Whereas this looks a little more home, quiet and unassuming on your desk. What I like about this one, one of the reasons I picked it, is the Ethernet ports, instead of being on the front like they are on this one, they're in the back. And the reason I like that is if you have this up against the back of your table, you can bring your Ethernet cables in from the back and you can pretty much hide them. So I sort of like that ability. But there's the plug for the uh, power input. We do have a little on off switch and it looks like there's a button here you can turn the LEDs off or on. Or it might just be the front light here if you want it completely, completely dark. Now. As far as performance, it's a gigabit switch, as well as this. So, assuming this one is still running, I really wouldn't expect to see any performance difference. Uh, I will go ahead and load this up with as much data going back and forth and see uh, if I notice any sort of lag. I really would be surprised if I did. Alright, we got it powered up. You can see there's a nice little blue LED on the front. It doesn't flash or anything, it's just on to tell you that the unit is powered on. We have a very nice glossy finish across the top, and then we have a glossy, or sort of a semi-gloss silver finish, or a metallic looking finish there. It is all plastic, the case and the covers and everything. Uh, on the bottom, if we look, there are a couple of vents, vented sections that are uh, to let cool air in. You want to make sure you don't set this on top of something that would block those vents. There are also four rubber feet on the bottom and uh, two key slots so you can mount it to a wall or a table using the included screws. Rubber feet keep it from sliding it around. Uh, 
too much so you don't slide it around accidentally. It's pretty firmly in place. Looking at the back here, a little back door flips up. And this is sort of the purpose of this one. This hides your cables. Keeps them all tucked away in the back. Activity lights there. There's a little legend at the top that tells you. If it's green, you got your gigabit connection. If it's yellow, you've got a 10-100. And if it's blinking, there's activity. So there's stuff going on there. And this is my main line, my main internet coming in. And this is the line that goes over the computer. Now, we have these little notches here that are to tuck your cables into. And the smaller cable, the insulation is thin enough, it seems to tuck in there quite comfortably. It doesn't feel like it's being pinched. However, this cable, you can see it's considerably larger, the insulation's thicker, and it does not want to go into that groove, and I really don't feel like forcing it. I don't know that I would necessarily damage it. I just don't know if I really want to force it in there. And unfortunately, this piece cannot be removed, so if you didn't like it, you can't just pop it out. You're kind of stuck with it. And of course, your power cable is thin enough, it just falls right into the notch. The only problem with that is if I had all my cables that were this thickness, they would all fit in there just fine and close the lid. But with this extra thick, extra large cable, uh, the lid does not want to close unless I really jam that in there. So I'm not sure if I'm really comfortable with doing that. And for anyone concerned about power usage, you can see we've got uh, 3.1 watts maximum. So it uses very little electricity, it just sips from the electrical outlet and uh, I guess it is fanless obviously uh, we got three-year hardware warranty and is there anything else interesting there not terribly there is the you know again this is the 908 there actually is a 908 e and it has two USB charging port so you can plug a couple devices in there and charge from it plus it is a managed switch and it uses a little more wattage there depending upon if it's being used to charge something or not but that's the 908e and this is the GS908 now the way to turn that LED off if you like is this little switch back here you push this and it actually kills all of the LEDs, all of your Ethernet activity LEDs, as well as the front power light. They all go off, and then when you want them back on. Now, the system still works just fine. You're just killing the lights. You hit that, and then everything comes back on. All right, I got everything disconnected. I'll move this over to where all of my other Ethernet cables are, plug in several computers, move some data back and forth, and take a look at the transfer speeds. So I have the switch over here, roughly where I'm going to locate it. Obviously I have some housekeeping to do with all the wires since this is in its new location. I have all the ports populated now. A couple computers are not on. That's why you don't see the lights flashing over there toward the one end. But uh, I've been moving data back and forth and I'm seeing numbers that are pretty consistent with other switches that I've got. I've been moving data back and forth here just to sort of get an idea of the speed, and this is pretty consistent with a gigabit switch. Most I've seen is about 113 megabytes, which is very really close to a gigabit. And the more computers you have moving stuff back and forth, it of course eats into the bandwidth. And just for the heck of it, I'll get the old thermal camera out here and let's take a look and see. There's a warm spot right in the center, so my guess is that's where the circuit board is. And the color difference just shows you that there's a temperature difference. It doesn't necessarily tell you what the temperature is. And when we look at the back side here with the little door open, you can see there's a little bit of warmth back there where all of the Ethernet cables plug in. But nothing, uh, nothing alarming. Now the thermal imaging was just to show you what it looked like. It doesn't really mean anything. Uh, it's just barely warm to the touch on top and it uses less than four watts. So it's not really gonna get hot by any means. Anyway, overall performance, I'm really happy with it. Uh, I'm able to move data back and forth between multiple computers. Uh, and you see speed increases and decreases depending upon how much data and bandwidth uh, each computer is using. So 
Uh, transfer speeds are really pretty consistent with what you would expect out of a gigabit, uh, gigabit switch. So this is the GS908. There is a GOS, I'm sorry, GS908E. It has two USB charging ports on the back and it is a managed switch, so it's more expensive. This one, uh, less than $20 on Amazon. Uh, it's hard to beat that for an eight port switch. Uh, the only thing that I didn't like or didn't care for, I should say, is the cable management system there, the notches. If, if all of your ethernet cables have very thin jackets, uh, then you won't have any problems because they'll all fit into those notches. If you have ethernet cables with thicker jackets and they don't really fit down in there, it's one of those things that kind of is what it is. Uh, I would prefer this to be removable, but it's not. So if I have to open those notches up a little, I can do that. Anyway, uh, this is Chris with Overclockers Club. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.